December 5th, 1986, Las Vegas. Underdog Greg Halgan wins the IBF lightweight crown from Jimmy Paul. February 8th, 1987, Providence, Rhode Island's own Vinny the Pasmanian Devil Pacienza scores a 10th round TKO over Roberto Elizondo. Lightweight battlers became destined to meet on a collision course for the IBF crown. Almost immediately, the war of words began and was in full swing by the time of their first face-to-face -face meeting. You got the title and they're putting me on the cover. I can tell you something. <laughs> April 18, 1987, Providence. While sparring, Vinny Pazienza's nose is broken. The fight is postponed to June 7. May 24, the original fight date, and verbal fisticuffs continue. You're not gonna take my belt, and I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you're gonna have to go back to watching Rocky movies with Daddy, okay? Okay, Greg, we'll see you on June 7. You just be I'll ready. Be there. And three days ago, the fireworks exploded once again. And now, Greg Haugen, the champion, is just minutes away from entering the Devil's Den. Their fists will do the talking now. Live from the Providence Civic Center, it's the IBF Lightweight Championship. Today on Sports World. This is the Providence Civic Center, also the home of the Friars of Providence College, who surprisingly went to the NCAA Final Four, providing much excitement in this area. Today, it is Vinny Pazienza's time in the spotlight, and this crowd has come out to root for the young man who's been labeled as the only professional sports franchise in the state of Rhode Island. Hi, everybody. Marv Alvin, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Well, all the uh, verbal warfare has concluded flying around for weeks uh, here, particularly in Providence, between Greg Haugen and uh, Vinny Pazienza, and they're just about set to uh, enter the ring and take care of the business uh, inside to our right. Greg Haugen comes in with a record of 19-0-1, nine by knockout. Vinny Pazienza, 22-1, 18 by KO, and pretty, uh, many boxing people feel that this has the potential to be one of the outstanding matchups of the year. Could be the fight of the year, but many factors enter into it. Of course, the contender Pazienza, the speed and the agility of Pazienza versus the strength and determination of the champion Haugen. The fragility of the nose that's been fractured. Pazienza had a nose fracture seven weeks ago. Maybe not enough time to get it well before this fight. And of course, this crowd, which may affect the judges with its roaring intensity. And the main quality is toughness. Whoever's toughness, it, from 10 to 15 rounds, that's the guy who's going to walk out of here with the championship. And Greg Halkin says he will do whatever he has to do. Use his head, his gloves, elbows, whatever. To get in close enough, he will take punishment to land his punch. Not as quick as Pazienza, but very methodical in contrast to Vinny Pazienza. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have just joined us from the West Coast. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Rick Haugen and Vinny Pazienza and back in Providence. This crowd anticipating the entrance of Vinny Pazienza and here he comes. A dramatic entrance for the Pasmanian Devil. idea a rock star is about to enter the ring area either that or a rocket ship something momentous is about to happen and that is usually the cue for Pazienza
office manager Lou Duva. There is 24-year-old Vinny Pazienza out of Cranston, Rhode Island. the Pazienza camp pulling out all the stops. And he led it to the ring by the Pazmanian devil. Pazienza, who has predicted an 11th round knockout of Greg Haugen. Well, Haugen says he will stop Pazienza in nine. And even his shoes are covered with spangles. I haven't seen that many spangles since my wife got dressed up to the Daughters of the American Revolution well, Ball. Actually, for Vinny, this is a low-key outfit. We've seen more flamboyance. But certainly must be a big hit in Italy because each one of his cornermen and Pazienza dressed in the colors of the Italian flag. And we await the entrance of the IBF lightweight champion, Greg Haugen. Here he comes to the streets of Bad Boy Boogie by ACDC, Greg Haugen. And back home at Auburn, Washington, Greg's mom, Sandy. And a contingent at the Rail Tavern, rooting Greg Haugen on. We are moments away from the start of the bout. A crowd of 9,000 at the Civic Center in Providence. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. The referee will be Wally Schmidt out of Puerto Rico. And there are the judges, Richard Bays of Miami, Keith McDonald of Carson City, Nevada, and Dr. Clark San Martino of Providence. The request made by both camps for one neutral judge, one from Providence and one from Nevada, where Haugen has been training. In fact, IBF President Bob Lee has now requested that the judges jot down one line concerning their uh, scoring of each round so the judges then will be accountable for their scoring. A uh, novel thought by uh, Bob Lee. We're set for the introductions. Let's go to Frank Carpano in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 15-round IBF lightweight championship bout. The judges for this fight, Richard Bays, Keith McDonald, and Clark A. San Martino. And now for the referee, the man in charge of this bout, Wally Schmidt. Now for the boxers. First in the blue corner, the challenger, weighing in at 134 and one half pounds from Cranston, Rhode Island, Vinny the Paz. So the uh, pre-fight extracurricular activity continues, and manager Lou Duva showing us his wrestling side, getting involved with the fighter Greg Haugen. And in the red corner, the champion weighing in at 134 and one quarter pound from Auburn, Washington, Greg Haugen. is by the 10-point must system with the three scoring judges that you saw a moment ago. Three knockdown rule not in effect. The mandatory eight-count rule is in effect. There is no standing eight, and a fighter may not be saved by the bell except in the final round. We have learned just moments ago that 
Vinny Pazienza, who had difficulty making the weight, is suffering with an upset stomach, something the Haugen camp is not aware of, but could change the complexion and strategy of this bout. And that's what a championship fight's all about, how you handle the stress. If you ate too much or drank too much fluids, then the stomach does get upset and he could become weaker. He's certainly not in the introduction. Nose to nose go Haugen and Pazienza. To cap that, that remains to be seen. So much of that happens in the dressing room in the first round, and you will not know until the fight starts and progresses how that will affect Benny Pazienza. So on to the first round. And this is round one. Scheduled for 15. You would have to search your memory to uh, hear the kind of ovation that the challenger got and no ovation for the championship. For the challenger, of course, it's his hometown. The champion is used to that. So much has been said prior to the fight in an effort to uh, sell tickets. And there have been some insults concerning the city of Providence that the Greg Halgan has offered. And Vinny Pazienza has certainly done his share in that department concerning Halgan and the state of Washington. A little rough stuff, and it's stopped immediately by Wally Schmidt. And the major concern from the Pazienza point of view has to be that broken nose that Pazienza suffered seven weeks ago, and you can look for Haugen to try to jab away at it, move inside, and then quickly get out. Well, of course, I think the... Uh, as the end cap is almost resigned to the fact that it will re-break and it will bleed through this uh, bout. Good left hand by Pazienza. Pazienza, while he is fresh, should dominate the early rounds because of the speed and superior boxing skill. It's in the later rounds where the going is going to get tough for young Vinny Pazienza. And Haugen lifted by Pazienza after he landed. Attempted by Pazienza in this opening round. Of course, if there's one guy that's not going to go for hot dog, and it's Haugen. Grimly determined, set, and ready to fight 15 rounds is Greg Haugen. And Haugen scoring with the jab. At the bottom of your screen, the Haugen family watching intently back at Auburn, Washington. And the champion Haugen not doing badly for himself this first round. Certainly, Vinny is not outspeeding him as much as he thought he would. Good exchange as we come up on 10 seconds to go in this opening round. We'll be back with round two after this word. Watch this at the end of round one. Pazienza and Haugen giving each other a facial nose to nose. On to round two. Haugen will do anything to get to that fragile nose of Vinny Pazienza's. How'd you score the first round? Very close, but to Vinny Pazienza because of superior boxing skill and simply the number of punches that landed. But it's much closer than I anticipated. Haugen doesn't look as slow as I thought he would. And certainly fighting back with a lot of determination. Haugen in the blue. Pazienza in the white. And Haugen continues to snap the jazz. Between rounds, Pazienza was told in his corner, they got to box this guy. Don't fool around. Google once said to him, you got to make this easy. I'll holler, touch him, touch him. It means jab and run. That's easy, but you got to 
fight. This is for the championship. A lot of conversation in the ring between the two. And the first little dribble of blood has just come out of Benny Pazienza's nose, as expected. A little redness over the right brow of Pazienza looks like it's the start of a cut. Nice combination from Haugen. Just what Halgen wants. He wants a rough house. He wants to go head to head with him. Under a minute to go, round two. It's for the IBF Lightweight Championship. Halgen defending his title for the first time. And Halgen landing the best punch of the fight so far. Lou Duva has tried to caution Vinny Pazienza don't fight even if you get hit. Just keep bipping and bopping. Of course, you can't do that to a young man like Benny Pazienza in front of his hometown. He will explode. Pazienza shifting, and Haugen saying, no, it doesn't work. And Haugen reaching out to connect with the left. Final seconds. Second round. And a strong round for Haugen. There's that left hook by Haugen. Pazienza trying to counter. Benny Pazienza suffering with a couple of nicks over the first two rounds. He actually has not been cut or nicked the last four fights, but he was either cut or nicked in the previous five. Something is causing a discoloration. It's not quite a cut. I don't know if it's something coming off his trunks. He's got so many red spangles and things. A moment it looked like there was a cut opening up, but that is not materialized. Or the gloves themselves are coloring off the gloves. Of course, what's coming from his nose is not coloring, but blood. And that's just the natural sequela of a broken nose five or, five or seven weeks ago. Seven weeks, I think, they go. Opening minute, round three. This is scheduled for 15. Haugen's last fight last December in Las Vegas in a surprise. He got a 15 round decision over Jimmy Paul to win the IBF lightweight crown. Pazienza continues to wind up looking for that big right hand, but has not been able to make contact. Vinny's not fighting an intelligent fight. Pazienza's not fighting the fight that he planned for or that Lou Duva laid out for him. He's fighting a sort of, if you want to use the word, semi-hysterical fight. He's going in two different ways. He's not coordinating his action, but Haugen looks completely calm and in control. He's fighting the kind of fight he wants to fight. And he's got to settle down. This is a 15-round fight. And now he's got to go back, circling around, popping that jab. That is Pazienza's fight right there. Swift moves. Frustrate Haugen. Less than a minute to go. Third round. Many comes off the rope with a sneaky right hand that nails Haugen, except that it doesn't have anything on it. A movement, a lot of flair, but Haugen has been out punching Pazienza. Fans back in Haugen's hometown in Auburn, Washington, checking 
Checking out the action. Great uppercut by Pazienza a moment ago. come to the end of the third round. Hey, you know, beautiful, baby. You don't have to get so sloppy with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Hold still now, hold still. Look, you don't have to get sloppy with this guy, understand? I want you to box, look. Get off fast combinations on the inside when you're there and get the hell out of there. You got this? I gotta watch him on that jab. He's waiting to come. Huh? You want? I'm not jabbing too much. He's waiting to come. No, you, what you gotta do is double yeah, up do your jab. Again. Double up and triple your jab. Hit his yeah. chest. Count you got this? Okay. Right? And as you go in, let him try and get close. You understand? Then you take off your left hook or your Just uppercut. Just relax. You got this now? Give him some more. Okay. All right? Just swallow it, man. Vinny. Vinny, look. Put the ice on me. Okay. Okay. Vinny. The last title fight here in Providence was back in May of 1983. Marvin Hagler and Wilfred Scipion. Hagler retaining his middleweight title with a fourth round knockout of Scipion. This is for the IBF lightweight championship. Haugen defending his title against Pazienza. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Well, what does the fight doctor scorecard tell us? Extremely close fight, 29-28 in Pazienza's favor. But each round has been a very close affair. Be interesting to see what the commentary will be on the judges' scorecards as they try to capture each round. Certainly be expected and look for outclassing of Haugen by the speedier Pazienza has not materialized. Haugen fighting with a great deal of patience, almost as if he's savoring what's to come after round 10. Referee Wally Schmidt from Puerto Rico. Halfway through round four. And there's the shifting of Pazienza looking to throw Hauken off stride, but to this point, it has not worked. because Pazienza did land on Haugen off that last exchange. Haugen laughing and taunting Pazienza. seconds of the fourth round. We'll be back here in Providence after this. Seconds out. Let's go, Seconds out. And there is Greg Haugen out for round number five. Haugen says he's never been knocked down. He said the only time he was hurt was in the first round of his fight against Chris Calvin. He got caught early, said he came out lazy with his hands down, but he did come back and came up with a victory. Greg Haugen at 19-0-1. Nine by knockout, and he passes the end 
comes in a 22 and 1, 18 by KO. Last February, Pazienza stopping Roberto Elizondo in the 10th round here in Providence. Haugen's last bout last December, and a surprise. He won by decision over Jimmy Paul to win the IBF lightweight crown. Pazienza's dad, Angelo, who from time to time uh, can't get a bit overexcited. Crowd trying to get Pazienza going. Pazienza has been fighting the fight he wants for the last two or three rounds in boxing, showing a lot of defensive skills and trying to neutralize the counterpunching of Greg Hogan. Greg has been doing very well counterpunching, however, and the rounds have been awfully close. What do you have it on the scorecard? Unofficially, of course, Vinny Pazian's ahead 39-37. But each round by just a slim margin. Usually the boxing ability, defensive ability of Vinny Paz, and because he's fighting his fight, not Greg Hogan's right now. He's settled down. Contrary to what was happening to him in the first two rounds where he was fighting an excited fight. Are able to muscle Haugen to the ropes. Haugen plays peekaboo and is able to slip away. Haugen truly looks like he's just biding his time. He's content to make these rounds close. Some may well have gone to the champion and wait for the later rounds. Oh, left hand by Haugen got in on Pazienza. Crowd roaring, but not much happened from Pazienza's point of view. And a Pazienza who from time to time will use the ropes, a no-no. I don't think he's gonna do it much on Wally Smith. defending his IBF lightweight title against Vinny Pacienza. And Pacienza effectively doubling up and then tied up by Haugen. A lot of holding and hitting right then. Wally Schmidt having a tough time with these two small men getting him apart. That's the kind of fight that's in Greg Haugen's favor. Toughest fight, he told me, was against a grizzly bear in a tough man competition in Atlanta. This guy is tough. This Greg Haugen is a tough kid. Well, he began his pro career in November of 84 after building up a reputation of those tough guy contests in Alaska, taking on 200-pound lumberjacks and pipeline workers. Started at $50 a shot and worked his way up to $1,000 per victory, and he became a drawing card in the tough guy contest. got one of those broad slavic faces it looks like george chavala he's got those long broad flat cheekbones certainly if he can take a punch like george chavala boy he's going to be some fighter for years to come a miniature version rick haugen a great strides through a five-month span back in 85 and 86 to earn the uh, title shot against Jimmy Paul by coming up with knockout wins over the likes of Freddie Roach and Chris Calvin, Charlie White, Lightning Brown. Crowd overreacting because Pazienza just grazed Haugen. But he just got nailed right then. Did Pazienza, Haugen nailed him with two punches in the crowd, ooh. Greg, stand back, come on. Come on, look at me, hold it up. Come on, let's go. Very little body punching going on here. Both men head hunting. And Haugen 
caught Panasianza. The nose now starting to bleed. A lot of blood across the face of Pazienza. That's that broken nose. It may well have been rebroken. And there will be concern in the corner of Eddie Pazienza. will stay right here between rounds. Haugen again with the short right hand. Haugen now connecting with a great deal of force with his counter punches. Depends on how Vinny reacts to this blood and the fact that his nose may well be broken again. While it's painful, it does not stop you from fighting. And in the corner of Vinny Pazienza, there are count of two. Two cut men and Ace Morata, Joey Fariello. Nice and easy. There's no cut. Nah. He's cut. Let's Vinny. Benny, look. Who's cut? He is. His nose is all busted up now. Starting to bust open on him. Benny, look. What you got to do with this guy here, Benny, you're giving him too much room. You're giving him. You're, you're walking in and you're running after the guy. I want you to jab your way and jab his chest and then take off. Now, on the reaction punch, is not doing good. On the reaction, I want you to see you take off. Okay? Now, come on. Come on, kid. Right? Now listen to these Jab people. his chest, jab it, and go to work on his body. Okay? Let me see you get low. Give him some water, Come on. Big left hand by Haugen, but in the corner of Vinny Pazienza, Lou Duva telling Pazienza that Haugen's nose may be busted up. <laughs> yeah, back him up, back him, hit him in the chest. Right, turn him, turn him. Round seven, scheduled for 15. Pazienza on the attack. Indicating no problem as Pazienza attempts to step up the action. While Pazienza looks much flashier, his punches in the last two rounds are short. They're not landing. That's why Haugen is making fun of them. They're just not landing. They're not hurting Greg Haugen. And Haugen has been very effective in counter punching. Come on, Vinny. fight. The look on Greg Haugen's face is uh, one of a man that's enjoying himself in this afternoon. He just looks like he's having fun. thoughts. Pazienza landed the right hand to stun Haugen. A lunging right hand that sent Haugen back. Coming up on a minute to go, seventh round. And these punches, even his hardest ones, don't seem to have a great effect on Haugen. He's willing to take two or three shots to land some of those hammering counter punches of his. He's fighting a measured fight. Earlier, Pazienza was getting hit consistently with the left hook of Haugen. And Pazienza was told, stop dropping the right hand. So far, no signs of the exhaustion. Uh, which was looked for because of his difficulties in the dressing room right before the fight. We were told that Pazienza, who had trouble making the weight, also was suffering with an upset stomach. Final seconds, seventh round. Come on. Okay. Prince 
Cern in the corner of Greg Haugen. Check out the cut under the eye. So Haugen now cut under the left eye, which will not affect the contest under the eye. And Pazienza with a possible broken nose. And both men beginning to show the effects of this battle, which is heating up. And much confidence being shown here by Vinny Pazienza opening up with that combination a moment ago, although Haugen laughed it off. And for the first time, you get a sense of one of the boxers taking command. A lot of heads going on there, a lot of butting going on, a lot of elbows. Wally Smith is going to have to start taking command when they get in close because it's getting dirty. Opening minute, round eight, scheduled for 15 for the IBF lightweight title. And roughly midway through, we have this thing roughly even in the scoring, 66 to 65, slight edge to the champion, Algon. up to date on the fight doctor scorecard uh, it's almost an even fight good combination by Pazienza and it's 66 to 65 Greg Haugen as Haugen has begun to slip ahead coming back effectively following the good start by Pazienza at the beginning of this eighth round. Vinny Pazienza is fighting this fight as if it were a 10-round fight. This is 15. Greg is taking his time. Vinny's laying it all out. Will he have enough in the tank to go between 10 and 15? That we will see. Pazienza has never gone 15. Haugen has, in fact, he did in his last fight when he beat Jimmy Paul to win the lightweight title. Punches are working good, you gotta take off fast, right? Your repertoire's are working good, but don't run in with them, okay? Now let me see you start to turn this guy, turn this guy. This is round nine. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from Providence, Rhode Island. And he passes the fighting in his hometown. Rick Haugen in the blue. Pazienza in the white. Pazienza opened up the eighth round very impressively. And Haugen came back strong. It's one of those rounds that Pazienza won, but you're afraid that he paid a bigger price than Greg Haugen. Because Haugen's punches toward the end were sharp and uh, destructive to Vinny Pazienza. Taking it in at the ringside. The rest of the family is back home in Auburn, Washington. Many willing to rest. Many willing to rest this round. And Greg Hogan willing to let him rest around. Way through the ninth round. And again, the heads come together. And 
as he ends it with that left hand down low, as he will do from time to time. When he puts that hand down, he's got plenty of distance between the two fighters, so he has plenty of time to bring it up by the time Greg makes his assault. And it is now Haugen who is establishing the tempo. trying to get into it with the chant for Vinny Pazienza. They were restless earlier in the round. Not much action taking place. Well, backhand swipe by Pazienza. So we go on to round 10 after these messages. with him make him miss and don't be going over the top of him she so go for his body a little bit then up to the head from the other side back in providence rhode island greg haugen and Vinny pazienza out for round 10 on nbc sports world and having rested and blown the round Vinny pazienza comes out steaming does not seem to be suffering any from that cut that he took earlier under the left eye. Well, it was well handled. It was never going to be a factor in the fight being under the eye. Questions still remain concerning that broken nose suffered seven weeks ago by Pazienza. Well, it certainly looks like from the bleeding and the swelling that it's broken again. However, no broken nose ever stopped the fight because it's just not the nature of that injury. As the answer nearly got caught. Hogan scoring with the jab and Pazienza countered with the left. That jab has been very effective for Greg Haugen. And Haugen looks as confident as he did in the first round. Sort of waiting his time for this flashy kid to wind down. Now, Vinny Pazienza has been winding down in the last three or four rounds. Lou Duva screaming from the corner of Pazienza. Box, box on the combination followed up by that right hand and the left half better to go 10th round throw punches, three and four yeah. punch combinations. You get lazy out there, right? Don't get lazy. I want you to punch out there, right? Give me some water. Give me some water. All right. 
hand speed, Vinny. Forget about the power. Forget about the power. Come on. Come on. All right, come on. Hey. All right, we got it. We got it. Just hold still. Vinny, look. You got to get those out of my nose. Okay, I'll get them out. Vinny, breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your mouth. Now listen, Vinny. Don't panic. Just relax. Speed. Don't panic. Forget about power. Yeah. Easy. 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 Vinny. Your hand speed is beautiful out there, right? But you gotta take off. Yeah. You listen, you hear me out there? Hey, are you hearing me? Now come on, now you gotta do it now, huh? Yes, I want you to jab, right? I want you to jab and move. Come on. Jimmy, three, four punch combination and turn this guy. Bang in the face, the bang is still up. Round 11 from the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Greg Haugen defending his IBF lightweight crown. Edwin Rosario is the WBA lightweight champ. And it'll be Jose Luis Ramirez going against Terrence Ali for the vacant title of, was held by Hector Camacho in the WBC. Strong finish by Pazienza in the 10th round. First time that Pazienza has gone past the 10th. How good has been there before? Back to the cat and mouse game to while away the minutes. Haugen has been able to fight his fight, to wait patiently for counter punching opportunities, and to hammer at the nose of Vinny Pazienza. And I have this a unofficially even fight at 95 95. And it is, of course, for the championship. At the, and at this point, from here on out, is where they're going to go. To life, but Pazienza's combination had little effect on Haugen. Scoring on the 10 point Musk system, handled by the three judges one from Providence, one from Nevada, where Haugen trains, and then the neutral judge, Richard Bays, out of Miami. Pazienza having one of his better rounds this, this time, deciding in the 11th round to go after him. Haugen has not changed the stroke. And this, we may be winding into one of these very interesting judging decisions because there's a wildly separate opinion of the press behind us, some of whom have Haugen, Haugen winning by a wide margin, and others have Pazienza winning. So we may be winning another one of those afternoons. Maybe we should just ask the guy from Miami. Yeah. That is the, the neutral judge. Which is a commentary on boxing that the others are not considered neutral. said why am I losing and Tesla said no but they'll rob you here you know I'm often wondered about that if you got judges from someplace else but of course the crowd does play a part in the emotions of the judges who aren't supposed to have any but that's just more Pazienza opening up big every one of these rounds good hook by Pazienza Winging hook from nowhere. As he ends up measuring as he sets up the right hand. And now all of a sudden, Greg Hogan too laid back. 
And if he lets these rounds slip away from him, he can let his title slip away from him. This corner is not wrong. He has to start winning these rounds convincingly. Keep fighting. Step by fighting. Come on. Halfway through round 12. saying no you're not bothering me these are the kind of rounds that Pazienza needs to take this title from Greg Haugen games with Greg Haugen, which can be dangerous, but he can afford to play away this last 30 seconds. And Pacienza getting in with the right, winding up with a bolo punch, and caught Haugen with the left. What a charge by Vinny Pacienza. Pazienza hearing it from the crowd as this 12th round comes to a close. for 15 and again Pazienza scoring with the right hand Pazienza's punches are now accurate where they have been wild and they're strong Haugen's corner beginning to show real concern that he can lose his title here what do you have it on the scorecard I have Vinny Pazienza ahead 115 to 113 wide range of opinions in terms of the scoring here at ringside as we uh, check the media scoring on the 10 point must system there's no question that the crowd is that extra up that Vinny Pazienza needs Pazienza is able to slip punches very effectively. Using the, the uh, strand of rope as a sort of spring, he just went back and forth. Big welt under the left eye of Vinny Pazienza. And Greg Haugen's mom back in Auburn, Washington, spending some difficult moments with Pazienza coming on strong the last couple of rounds. Less than a minute to go, round 13. Pazienza showing some signs of weariness from that uh, three-round charge that he's been on. Pazienza's left eye also closing. And that could turn things. Pazienza's hand resting wearily on that top round. That top rope and that left 
wealth that we mentioned has now closed Vinny Pazienza's eye. A trickle of blood emanating from the corner of the eye. And as we come to the end of round 13, Pazienza may be in a situation where he will need a knockout. That eye is closing. And this fight has turned again. Underneath, that's okay. No nothing, problem. Nothing, nothing. Here, nothing at all. Yeah, no problem. Give me the. What do you want? Under this pressure, bro. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Let's go. Hey. hey. And we're headed to round 14 in the corner of Pazienza. He was being told the left eye is no problem, but it is closing. Well, it's virtually closed as far as vision is concerned. It's just a slit. And he's in a big problem. He can't see out of one eye and he can't breathe out of his nose. And that's what you call trouble in boxing. And that's a very difficult fight to score. There's no telling uh, what is written on the judges' scorecards. Richard Bays from Miami, Keith McDonald out of Carson City, Nevada, Dr. Clark San Martino from here in Providence. And he being told he needs these two rounds to win the fight. That's an understatement. He certainly does. Well, win or lose, Vinny Pazienza has certainly shown that he's not just a piece of fluff. He's a tough, tough kid. And the same for Greg Haugen, who comes in as the IBF lightweight champ. Off the win over Jimmy Paul last December. Haugen is virtually unmarked. And Vinny looks like he ran into a Mack truck. Haugen had the nick under the left eye earlier, but that has provided no problem. from Haugen. That's the way these rounds go, just flipping back and forth, just when you think Pazienza's back in command, back comes the champion Haugen. Pazienza succeeding with the uppercut. A minute left, round 14. Neither man willing to concede an inch through every one of these rounds. Good punch with nothing on it. Still a point getter for Pazienza. It just may be at the superior hand speed of Vinny Pazienza putting in two, three, and four punches instead of one will win these rounds for him. But they're close because the meaningful punches are being landed by Greg Haugen. He hit Haugen after the bell. And we'll stay right here. 15th and final round coming up. It's the last round, I think. It's the last round, I think. What round is this? 15th. 15th. You got to knock him out this round to win. Not aware of the round that Stan Tischler in the corner of Greg Haugen. And Stan said the last round, and you got to knock him out to win. Oh. That is showing great concern with the uh, the judges' scorecard. That's Greg Spomp in the Rail Tavern. And they got this the one. Bring him back. Hey. Don't stop punching. Talk to me for many minutes. Right. Okay. Well, you gotta go with two hands, you gotta go with this guy. It's three minutes, you're gonna tap it around. Come on, three minutes. At 
this crowd trying to provide the spark for the hometown favorite, Vinny Pacienza. 15th and final round. on the scorecard. I've got it 143 to 133. Vinny Pazienza by one point. You mean 134 by 133. I'm sorry. All right. That's the fight doctor scorecard. Scoring on the 10 point must. And we're opening minute. Final round. Face a bloody mask now and a mask of exhaustion. Then he is drawing a big breath from his mouth. He can't breathe through his nose. He can't see out of one eye. And on comes Vinny Pazienza. And we are halfway through this final round. Greg Haugen defending his IBF lightweight crown. And what a great show by both fighters as neither one has been willing to give up an inch. There goes a volley and a rally by Pazienza. Those are the ones that give him the points to take this last round. And a brawling conclusion. Benny too tired to take advantage. Combination by Haugen. We're under a minute to go in the 15th. So it has come down to the final half minute. Greg Haugen and Vinny Pazienza. Seconds left in the fight. Strong finish by Pazienza. So they go the distance. Greg Haugen and Vinny Pazienza go 15 for the IBF lightweight title. For the decision, let's go to the ring. Here's Frank Carpano. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. <laughs> and apparently there's some confusion in the ring, uh, both uh, Haugen and Pazienza's people uh, lining up for the uh, proper uh, photograph angle, I would assume. And that's the referee, uh, Wally Schmidt, who is prepared and gentlemen, a unanimous to lift to the decision. hand of the uh, winner. It's Judge Clark San Martino scores it, it 144 to 141. Judge Richard Bay scores it 144 141. And Judge Keith McDonald scores it 144 to 142 for the winner and new IBF lightweight title holder, Vinny the Pazmanian Devil, Pazienza. And that the scene back in Greg Haugen's hometown in Auburn, Washington, as a new IBF lightweight champion has been crowned. It is Vinny. Pazienza, a decision that will be widely discussed. Very difficult fight to score. And there are many here on press row who had it in Haugen's favor. A tough defeat for Haugen 
And Vinny Pacienza has won himself a championship. And a classy move by Greg Haugen. Now these two went at each other pretty good verbally the last few weeks. And Haugen over to congratulate Vinny Pacienza. Gutty effort by both Pacienza and Haugen. So Vinny Pacienza is now the IBF lightweight champion. Right at the start, we mentioned that it had the potential to be one of the outstanding matchups of the year, and it was a terrific fight. Let's go to the ring. Here's the fight, Doctor, with the new champion. Congratulations, a wonderful finish. Thank you very much. I did this for all the people who support me, all the past maniacs all over the world. I got the best fans anywhere, and I didn't only do it for them. I did it for all you brilliant sports writers who keep writing the stupidest things about me. All right. The nose, when did it break? I think I heard it in the third or fourth round. But, Freddie, like I told you before, I wouldn't be stopped today. No matter what, I kept going. Greg's a tough, tough son of a gun. He hit me with some hard shots. I can take a punch. I'm for real. It's time for everybody to wake up. I'm the new kid on the block. Would it surprise you to know that a lot of the sports writers behind me had Haugen winning big? Well, no, I think it was a close fight. It could have gone either way. I give Greg a lot of credit. He was in tremendous shape. Um, I was thankful I got the shot. I'm going to be a good champion. I'm going to defend it successfully, and I'm not going to lose. Make no two mistakes. I'm undefeated, and I'm the new champion of the world. Congratulations, Thank you. Vinny. Mark, Kenny Weldon, all my support in Texas. I love it. Thank you, and back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, the new IBF lightweight champion, Vinny Pazienza. He mentioned he's undefeated. There has been some discussion about one particular loss that has yet to be clarified, a loss that took place in Europe. So we have him as 23 and 1, 18 by knockout. The 24 year old out of Cranston, Rhode Island, Vinny Pazienza, walking away with the title. Now, Ferdy is alongside the former champ, Greg Haugen. A disappointed Greg Haugen. Did you think you could win here in Providence? Well, I thought I could. Uh, I thought the fight was real close, you know, but uh, I didn't think they were going to give it to me on a close fight. Uh. You know, the kid fought a hell of a fight. He fought tough, and, uh, you know, I, I had trouble cutting the ring off on him. He ran a lot, uh, but I'll give him a lot of credit. He's a tough kid. Uh, you know, I hope to have a rematch. Did you think that he could maintain that pace through round 10 to 15? He seemed to pick up in action then. Well, I, I didn't pick it up like I should have. Uh, you know, uh, I had a little bit of a mental lapse. I should have listened to my corner a little more, and, uh, you know, I got caught up in the, in the fans, and, you know, he never really did hit me hard and hurt me. You know, and as you can see, he was missing a lot of punches. You know, you guys thought he was just going to punch your hell you out. You said he was he caught. He, he, you were caught up by the fans. Do the fans, do, do they influence you in a title fight? Well, they obviously influence the judges. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I thought I had to rally back every time he rallied. Uh, and I thought I did good. You know, I thought I rallied back when he rallied. Uh, you know, I never really let him uh, steal one round really big. Uh, you know, but I fought a tough fight, and so did he. Uh, it, I give my heart out, so. It was indeed a very tough fight and a great disappointment for you. I'm sure it was a fight that was so close that all of ringside had it, most for you and most for Vinny. You couldn't tell which was which, and so, so disappointed Greg Haugen. There'll be other days, and back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, for the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco, this is Marv Albert saying so long from Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs>